As you can see, I've converted my go-kart back into a regular go-kart. This is my gate setup from those first two tests. And I have now stripped this motor and I'm going to move on to the next set of tests. Uh, the last one didn't really prove anything, so I thought it's time to start again. This is a knockoff of a Honda GX160. And here's all the intake parts and the muffler. Here's my new intake adapter and my exhaust adapter. So we're going to now go through the 30-minute uh, burn-in and then try the water gas test with this one. The gas from the last test, incidentally, still turns color. This was from this old motor here. Uh, the gas turns color and it consumed the gas um, without apparently consuming the water. So I don't know if that test is a failure or not. It looks like one. So we're going to try again with this motor and see if we get anywhere. I'll let you know how that works. Well, here's my new geek setup. I've got my great big tall tanks, about 27 inches high. This is a Honda knockoff motor, uh, the five and a half horse, six and a half, I think maybe. There's the intake side, the exhaust side. The exhaust gas goes out around this outer pipe and out this way. This joint here it rolls all the way around and down into the tank into the bubbler. The in tank side, which is just at the top of this tank, then runs around to this end. That's my fuel control valve, and then fresh air control valve on this side. The input or the intake gases go through the center pipe around the reactor rod to this T and in. And this is another valve. This is for testing um, whether or not the intake should be uh, pre or post reactor. So, here we go. Let's see if this thing works. Well, slight problem with my kit. Uh, one was this last T right here started uh, unthreading itself, so I clamped it on because I don't want to, didn't want to do too much with it while it was running. And then the heat of it running melted my hose, so you can probably see all the goo on that connection. And the hose, here it is, uh, it was getting a little warm, so I happen to have a few extra parts, and I've made myself a little copper flare-end uh, connector. Hopefully, just a short length of copper will dissipate some of the heat before it gets to the vinyl, and uh, it won't melt any more hose. But it was running uh, a second ago. My batteries died. There's the other equipment failure I had while I did get it running. So, I'm going to uh, fix my new hose on there and get it started again. Well, we got the motor inside, I drained the fuel tank out, and this is what I got. Putrid colored gas, a tiny little water deposit at the bottom, this looks the same as the last test. So basically this test did the same thing the last motor did, it has nothing to do with the quality of the motor, this is a practically brand new motor. And again, in about 20 minutes, it turned the fuel yellow started to stumble and then just kind of while I was adjusting the uh, fresh air and fuel uh, handles it died. So I don't know that uh, if I would put any more gas in it I wouldn't have had the same result. I did experiment with both um, air nozzles so there's the post reactor uh, fresh air and on this side the pre reactor fresh air and it didn't seem to help one side or the other the rod's still pretty hot, so I kind of had to pick it up with my welding gloves. But um, there's weird sets of rings, and I wonder if the rod is bouncing around madly inside the reactor chamber, I wonder if these rings, these shiny spots, um, correspond with some of the fittings. Because the pipe is going to get 
uh, well, the end of the uh, reactor rod, are right, not reactor rod, sorry, the intake uh, pipe, are right here, and the other end is right around here. And then uh, I've welded this coupler on. Uh, yeah, I was just playing around. Um, so then I had to put another nipple here. So there's a gap in here where the reactor rod, or the intake pipe rather, stops, and then another pipe starts. So I wonder if my rod is actually shifting that direction and then you know getting stuck or whatever but it's certainly the there's a T at both ends I've taken this one off obviously but the T at both ends make sure that the rod can't fly too far but uh, I thought the theory on this was the rod would uh, center itself longitudinally in the intake pipe or actually in the reactor chamber which is going to be somewhere centered in this bit where the exhaust goes so it should have centered itself right in here so I don't know what these uh, these rings are. Uh, we'll have to uh, we'll have to see. The solution to stopping the rod from traveling out of bounds, if you like, would be to put some kind of a stopper uh, in the uh, inner pipe. And the only way I could think of doing that is maybe drilling a hole through it and then hammering a uh, a hard nail through it so that it would stop on the the nail, but the fuel would still be able to flow around it without any trouble. So uh, we'll see. More testing uh, as soon as I get a chance.